In this video, you will learn how to assemble your VSD 6500 to 8000 boat lift. This will complement other detailed information provided in Flo's written assembly instructions and owner's manual. Before getting started, it is important to have a dock system layout. Our designer dock tool is ideal to help you lay out and visualize the dock system prior to assembly and installation. We recommend that you talk the nuts to the specification, not the bolts. Place parts and fasteners in their designated locations prior to each step. Before tightening the fasteners, measure from corner to corner, then the distance between the corner posts above the frame beam and at the top of the corner posts, to ensure that your lift is square. Make sure your lift is level and square before installing the V-brace or ball screw tube. Assemble the cradle clamps with the given nuts and bolts before installing it onto the cradle beam. Use a marker to denote fasteners, which have been tightened to the specified torque. In order to do the assembly, you will need the following tools. Warning. Do not use an impact wrench to adjust the easy level legs. Applying too much force to the easy level legs will damage the mechanism. Do not adjust any easy level leg more than 2 inches at one time. Alternate between all legs until your lift is level. If you do not adhere to these recommendations, it may result in poor lift performance and damage to lift components. Do not use a corded drill to adjust the easy level legs. Use of a corded drill may cause electrocution. Attach the sand pads to the corner posts using a half inch by five inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque to 25 foot pounds. Repeat on each corner post. Next, arrange the corner posts in this orientation. The welded brackets face the inside of the lift. The water depth stickers must face out on the front and rear of the lift. Insert the frame beam spacers into each end of the 108 inch frame beams. Ensure that the holes in the frame beam align with the clamp. Attach the frame beams to the pre-attached lower corner post clamps using two 1 half inch by 4 inch bolts, 4 half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Hand tighten the nuts only. Do not torque until all the nuts and bolts have been installed. Repeat this same process for each corner. Once the frame beams have been installed, ensure that your lift is square. Torque all the bolts to 80 foot-pounds. On corner post B, loosen the nut and lift the leg. Do not allow the leg to fall inside the corner post. Attach the ball screw clamp using two 3 8 by 6 inch bolts and two 3 8 inch nylock nuts. Torque to 35 foot-pounds. Next, slide the ball screw tube into the hole on the post. Make sure your lift is level and square before installing the ball screw tube. Orient the ball screw tube between corner posts A and B, so that the grease hole and support bolt are visible on the outside of the lift. Make sure the holes in the ball screw, ball screw clamp, and bearing block are aligned. Insert a 3 8 by 6 inch bolt and 3 8 inch nylock nut into the upper hole to ensure the holes are aligned. Then, insert a half inch by six inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut into the lower hole. Hand tighten only. Do not torque until all the bolts have been installed. On the other side of the ball screw tube, pull the cable out before placing it in between the corner posts. Align the cable on the pulley and ensure that there is no kinks or twists. Now, slide the ball screw tube down and align it with the holes in the bracket on corner post A. When inserting the bolts, make sure to pull the cable down. Insert two 3 8 by 6 inch bolts and two 3 8 inch nylock nuts to hold the tube in place. Next, insert a 3 8 by 4 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. The cable must run above the bolt. And the cable must run below this bolt. If it is not, please fix this now. Now you may torque the bolts. Start on corner B. Torque the highlighted bolt to 35 foot-pounds. 
torque the highlighted bolt to 80 foot-pounds. On corner A, torque the highlighted bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Torque to 5 foot-pounds. Find the center line on the frame between corners C and D. Next, find the center line of the V-brace clamps. Slide the clamps together and match the center line of the clamps with the center line on the frame. Ensure that the male V-brace clamp is on the inside of the lift. Attach the two V-braces to the clamps using a 3 8 by 3 and a half inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Next, fasten the front and universal upper V-brace clamp to corner post C using a 3 8 by 6 inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Make sure that the front upper V-brace clamp is pointing towards the inside of the lift. Torque the bolt to 35 foot-pounds. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3 8 by 3 and 3 quarters inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. On corner post D, attach the universal and rear upper V-brace clamp using a 3 8 by 6 inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Make sure that the rear upper V-brace clamp is pointing towards the outside of the lift. Torque the bolt to 35 foot-pounds. Attach the other end of the V-brace to the bracket using a 3 8 by 3 and 3 quarters inch bolt and a 3 8 inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. Do not torque. Ensure that the corner posts are square. Now you may torque the bolts. First, torque the highlighted bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Now, torque the upper bolts to 35 foot-pounds. Insert the frame beam spacers into each end of the 118-inch frame beams. Ensure that the holes in the frame beam align with the clamp. On corner post B, attach the frame beam to the lower frame using an outer frame clamp. Fasten the frame clamp and the beam to the corner post using two 1 half inch by 4 inch bolts, 4 half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Hand tighten the nuts only. Do not torque until all the nuts and bolts have been installed. On corner post C, attach the other end of the frame beam to the lower frame using an outer frame clamp. Fasten the frame clamp and the beam to the corner post using two 1 half inch by 4 inch bolts, 4 half inch washers, and two half inch nylock nuts. Hand tighten only. On corner post A, attach the frame beam to the lower frame using an outer frame clamp. Fasten the frame clamp and the beam to the corner post using a 1 half inch by 4 inch bolt, two half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. The lower bolt will be installed later. On corner post D, attach the other end of the frame beam to the lower frame using an outer frame clamp. Fasten the frame clamp and the beam to the corner post using a 1 half inch by 4 inch bolt, two half inch washers, and a half inch nylock nut. Hand tighten only. The lower bolt will be installed later. Use a framing square to ensure that the lift frame is square. On corner B, torque the bolts to 80 foot-pounds. Repeat on corner C. On corner A, torque the bolt to 80 foot-pounds. Repeat on corner D. Place the right side cradle so that it aligns with corner posts A and B. Place the left side cradle so that it aligns with corner posts C and D. Note, the upward side cable is placed between corner posts B and C. And the downward side cable is placed between corner posts A and D. Make sure there is a quarter inch gap between the UHMW strip and the corner posts. Attach the lifting cable clevis to the cradle lift clamp using a 3 quarters by 2 inch bolt. Make sure the bolt is seating in the slot of the clamp. Do not tighten. Slide a half inch nut into the cradle clamp. Thread a half inch by two inch bolt into the clamp and nut just until the bolt catches the nut. 
do not tighten. On the other seven cradle clamps, slide a half inch nut into the cradle clamp. Thread a half inch by two inch bolt into the clamp and nut just until the bolt catches the nut. Do not tighten. Place a cradle U-clamp on both corners of each side of the cradle beams. Align the holes in the clamp with the holes in the side cradle. Attach the cradle U-clamp using two 3 8 by one and a quarter inch bolts and two 3 8 inch nylock nuts. Torque to 35 foot-pounds. Repeat on the other ends. On corner B, slide two cradle clamps onto the cradle beam. Place the side cradle beam and U-clamp on top of the cradle beam. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle U-clamp. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. On the other side of the cradle, corner C, slide two cradle clamps onto the cradle beam. Place the side cradle beam and U-clamp on top of the cradle beam. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle U-clamp. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. On corner D, slide two cradle clamps onto the cradle beam. Place the side cradle beam and U-clamp on top of the cradle beam. Slide the cradle clamps over top of the cradle U-clamp. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. On the other side of the cradle, corner A, slide one cradle clamp onto the cradle beam. Place the lifting cable into the two inch shiv. Note, the shiv is located in step seven of your hardware card. Now, place the cable and shiv into the clevis. Place the side cradle beam and U-clamp on top of the cradle beam. Slide the cradle clamp and the cradle lift clamp over top of the cradle U-clamp. Hand tighten the bolts to hold everything in place. Do not torque. Using a pair of C-clamp pliers, squeeze the cradle clamps against the cradle U-clamp, then tighten until snug. Ensure that there is still a quarter inch gap between the side cradle beams and the corner posts. Now, you may torque all the bolts on the cradle clamps to 80 foot-pounds. Next, you will need to locate the front cable sheave and the cable holder. Wrap the cable around the cable sheave, followed by the cable holder to hold the cable in place. Now, slide on a 3 quarters by 3 inch bolt, a 3 quarters inch lock washer, and 3 quarters inch nut to hold everything in place. Make sure that the cable holder is installed at 120 degrees, as shown. Torque the nut to 80 foot-pounds. Next, take the cable end and secure it in place with a 1 half by 2 and a half inch bolt and half inch nylock nut. Torque the nut to 80 foot-pounds. Install the other cable end on the corner post D using a 1 half by 2 and a quarter inch bolt and half inch nylock nut. Torque to 80 foot-pounds. On corner post D, attach the cable end to the lower lift frame using a 1 half by 5 inch bolt, two half inch flat washers, and a half inch nylock nut. Torque to 80 foot pounds. Repeat this same step on corner A. On corner B, attach the cable end using a 1 half by 2 and a quarter inch bolt and a half inch nylock nut. Torque the bolt the 80 foot-pounds. Repeat on corner post C. Now, finish tightening the lift clevis. The side of the clevis must be parallel to the cradle beam. If it is not parallel, remove the clevis and rotate the bolt in the slot until the clevis is parallel when tight. Make sure that there are no twists in the lifting cable. Attach the shiv and cable loop to the cable clevis using a 3 quarters by 3 inch bolt and a 3 quarters inch jam nut. The bolt head will be parallel to the cradle beam. Torque to 100 foot-pounds. Now, you may attach the drive train. Please, note that the drive train is sold separately. Before attaching the drive unit to the lift frame, Apply a generous amount of anti-seize from the small packet included 
to the inside of the rigid coupler and the motor shaft. The rigid coupler on the drive train and the ball screw mate together. Attach the drive train to the lift using four 3 8 by one and three quarters inch bolts, eight 3 8 inch flat washers and four 3 8 inch nylock nuts. Tighten the fasteners until there is a 1 8 inch gap between the ball screw clamp and the motor plate. Check to make sure that the gaps between the cradle beam and frame are not extreme. On corner posts B and C, there should be approximately 1 to 3 inch gap. On corner posts A and D, there should be approximately 0 to 2 and a half inch gap. Insert a 1 half by 1 and a quarter inch bolt through the top hole so that the bolt head is inside the lift. If your lift has a canopy, discard the 1 half by 3 quarters inch bolt that came with the ASC box. Remove the 1 half inch nylock nut holding the canopy insert. Attach the ASC box to the bolt and install the nut. If you have a canopy, talk to 60 foot-pounds. If you do not have a canopy, tighten the nut and bolt until they are snug. Then go a half turn past that. Next, stick the dual lock on the corner post and press firmly together. Plug the limit switch wire from the lift frame into the limit switch plug from the ASC. The limit switch wire from the lift frame is located on the channel on the bottom side of the ball screw tube. If you plan to use an AC power source, the drivetrain can now be connected to the power source. Warning. It is very important that this connection be made in accordance with state and local regulations. The power connection to the flow 120 volt AC VSD drive must be made by a qualified, licensed electrical contractor using the appropriate 20 amp GFCI or ground fault circuit interrupter protection device. This unit must be located at the lead end of the power supply to prevent any unprotected current from coming in contact with water. Failure to do so may result in severe injury or possible death. Improper setup will void the warranty. If you plan to use a DC power source, attach the 24 volt VSD drive battery trays to the ball screw tube using four 3 8 by five and a half inch bolts and four 3 8 inch nylock nuts. The offset side of the tray should go on the outside of the lift to provide clearance for the inside of the lift. Tighten to remove any play in the bolts and bend the tabs slightly around the tube. Torque to 5 foot-pounds maximum. Place the caps on the corner posts. Next, insert a 12-volt battery into each battery box. Plug the wired remote into the plug on the ASC with the blue zip tie. Plug the limit switch wire into the ASC plug without a zip tie. Secure all wires using the supplied Velcro. If a canopy is to be installed on the lift, the wired remote can be strung along a canopy hoop and hung next to the dock. Make sure to secure the remote to the canopy hoop with Velcro. For the 24 volt system, there will be two separate batteries. On the first battery box, connect the red lead to the positive battery terminal and the white battery interconnect to the negative terminal, as shown. On the second battery box, connect the red and black lead to the negative terminal and the other end of the white battery interconnect the end with the circuit breaker to the positive terminal, as shown. Attach the battery voltmeter included with the battery box to the batteries according to the included instructions. Now, place the covers on the battery boxes and strap them through the slots on the battery tray. See the VSD drive instructions for more information. Refer to your assembly guide and owner's manual for instructions on test running your lift. Your boat lift is now assembled. Thank you for choosing Flow. Please consult your local dealer if you need additional assistance.